right, this is John Cole with OKRaw.com. Today we have another exciting episode for a beautiful sunny day here in September. And the reason for this episode is because I want to encourage you guys to get out to your local farms, right? And shop your local farms. You guys are so used to like, I'm a raw foodist and I go to the grocery store, or go to Whole Foods or the health food store, or maybe even better yet, the farmer's market to buy food. But there's different websites out there. If you just Google like you pick farms near me, there'll be a website that tells all the you pick farms near you. And I want you guys to seek out farms, even if you got to drive an hour or two, right? Luckily, this farm is a half hour from my place or whatever. And I come here pretty much weekly to source some of my food. Now, buying your food at a local farm is so important. Number one, it supports the local economy. Number two, you're going to get way fresher quality food, guys, than you can at the grocery store that's being trucked and shipped in. I mean, depending on where you live in the country, right? A lot of the foods being grown in California, even, you know, in different countries and being shipped across the world so that you guys could eat it. What could be more sustainable than locally grown food? I mean, of course, I always encourage you guys to grow food in your backyard like I do, but I can't grow everything in my backyard. So I'm glad for local farms like Gilcrease Orchard that I visit, you know, weekly, you know, to stock up and fill in on things that I don't grow myself. In addition, during the farm experience, and let's head in actually, um, you know, this is an orchard farm with unlevel ground, so you know, just be, be sure that you could handle unlevel ground and you got some actually decent balance. <laughs> but they have all kinds of stuff, you know, so the first thing you want to do, you want to check in with the people that work at the farm and say, hey, what do you guys have right now? What's in season and where is it at? This farm is huge. I mean, you get a lot of exercise coming to the farm, but uh, you know, you can come over here. And they usually have some signs here at Gilcrease and it'll say like, it'll say their hours 7 to 10, you pick, vegetables are a dollar per pound, fruits a buck 50, they have pear cider, apple cider, and whatnot. But then you come over to this sign, it says available today, September 7th, cucumber, butternut, spaghetti squash a dollar a pound, and you pick peaches, 88 to 94. So those are the rows. So now that we know where the rows are, now we gotta actually head down and walk the farm, get some exercise, breathe some fresh air, and then find and pick our own ripe peaches. That's something you guys don't get to do at the store, because when you buy them at the store, somebody else picked them off the tree at the ripeness they needed so that they don't go bad. When you pick them off the tree, you can pick them so soft, they're almost gonna melt in your hands and they're probably gonna bruise before you even get it home. So uh, let me show you guys my next tip. So my next tip is, <laughs> is a fruit farm bring some boxes man these are just boxes i got at the store and this way you could put all your fruit single layer on the boxes now you want to go to the checkout and have them do a tear weight so they could say oh this box is like 0.75 of a pound so that when they charge you for the peaches they don't charge you for the box too because you brought them but otherwise the place will give you free bags but if you put all the right peaches in the bags or whatever they're gonna mush and smush the other thing i like to do is i got this big bag from like Costco, so that I have a reusable bag that I basically just get to fill up every time so I don't even need to take their plastic bags. And of course, I got my box in there. <laughs> and of course, to stay hydrated in the heat, I got my green juice, all right? So anyways, uh, let's go ahead, take our cart and uh, walk down and find some ripe peaches. So we probably walked the farm like 200 yards along this nice path and now we can see the whole orchard with all the trees, like a lot of the trees were not ripe yet or already been harvested and this is the section with the uh, variety so like this farm grows multiple varieties so if you go to the store you can just buy peaches and they're never you never know the exact kind I mean there's like red Indian blood peaches white peaches and this is where the ripe fruit is now we can see there's some fruit on the trees and the cool thing is if you're tall you're you're hooked up because all the fruit near the bottom is picked by the short people the fruit near the top of the tree is still what's available and that's usually where I go first to check them to just gently squeeze and also smell to see if you could smell any ripe fruit right yeah I mean I smell that amazing peach smell but here's a t here's the ticket man you want to go where people aren't right people are lazy they come to the path they come to this row they stay with the first 20 trees we're gonna get down the clear end which is like way far down there at least like another hundred yards at least actually no that's like 200 yards man it's longer than a football field all the way down there to where the people ain't going so we could find the best. We're about halfway down the row and I wanna show you guys actually how to pick a ripe peach because I know some of you guys might pick peach at the store. When you pick them at the store, they're always pretty much rock hard. You might get lucky and get ones that are kind of soft. But off the tree, if you don't pick them at the right time, you pick them too hard, they're never really gonna ripen up and they're never really gonna get sweet for you. And to me, the sugar's really developed like right when it's almost ripe. 
I mean, a lot of people here just come and just, oh, they're, they said they're ripe, so they just start picking random ones. I mean, so like this one, if you feel it, I usually like to try to gently feel it right around at the top, actually, and it's just like given to general pressure, but when I literally touched it, it came off easy. So on peaches, that's a sign that it's probably a bit ripe. So like, because this one came off easy, gives to very little pressure. This is probably good in a couple days if you leave it out. But if we go a little, little bit higher up, these guys, if you touch them, like even just the sides, they're really soft. And we pull this off, comes off really easy, and we press the top here. I mean, our fingers will literally dent this. So that's the kind you want, right, when they're, they're really soft. So, but these ones you should probably pick and then eat them within a day or two. You know, this one that's a little bit more firm, you could let ripen up for a few days. The other thing is, you gotta use your nose. So, I mean, I'm looking, number one, for vibrant colors, right? <laughs> If they're not looking super vibrant or appealing to the eyes, then I'm not gonna bother with it because it's like, you know, fruit should, you know, uh, en enable our senses and make our senses go crazy. Like, whoa, man, that fruit's so sexy. And then it's so soft. Oh, just like, you know, feeling your lover's parts of their body. <laughs> and then when you smell it, oh my gosh, this has the best peach smell. It smells like so floral. Mm. And then when you open it, right, we could open it up. Oh my gosh, look at that nice, rich color. You guys ever see color like that on peaches? Nice, deep red. That's what I'm looking for, man. Extra anthocyanin content on there. And then you can smell once you open it. Oh man, it just reminds you of like, uh, like the summertime. And then, and then it excites your taste buds when you eat it. Oh my God, that's the best one I had. It's you guys don't get this experience, guys. This is warm summer sun peaches. Like... It's not cold out of the fridge. It's never been in cold storage. It's never been a lot of stone fruits. They'll get uh, cold storage burned. They'll get burned in cold storage and then they'll get mealy. This is like that perfect texture <laughs> you just want to eat. I mean, look at this. The juice is just dripping out of that. Hey, I'm wasting the juice. Seriously, guys, you guys got to come to a U-Pick so you guys can pick your own fresh fruit. The only thing better than fresh fruit from a U-Pick farm is fresh fruit that you picked off your own trees. But most of you guys don't have a garden or fruit trees to do that from. <laughs> Even though I'm at a peach orchard sampling some peaches this morning while I'm picking them, don't forget and neglect your greens. You know, I also brought my green juice, which is, this is mostly romaine hearts with kale and ashitaba stocks. Uh, greens, in my opinion, are essential for a raw food diet or just any diet. Greens are the most under-eaten food. This very farm will also sell greens usually in the springtime. You pick greens, they're super fresh, super delicious. I like to juice them, they're a lot easier to digest that way. This is only four pounds of greens and vegetables in this juice. Mm. Let's keep me hydrated in the sun. Let's go ahead and give you guys that next peach picking tip. Just because there's tons of trees here doesn't mean they're all ripe and ready to go. You know, here's a tree here, but I'm skipping it. Why would I be skipping it? Because I don't want to waste my time, right? Because if we look under the tree, the tree is not dropping any fruit. That means this tree is not yet ready to have all its fruit to be picked or ripe because it's not dropping any fruit, right? Even though these are the same varieties of fruit and they should ripen about the same time, they all may vary. Like, you know, people are different in their different cycles and things that they go through in their lives. So I'm skipping this tree and instead we're gonna go to this tree and you can see like this tree is just littered with ripe peaches down below that unfortunately didn't get picked by somebody because people need to eat more fresh fruits instead of donuts. <laughs> fruits are my donuts. They're the best thing you could eat to crave, to you know, solve your sweet tooth, but also to give you plenty of different vitamins and minerals and phytochemicals that will literally fuel your body with natural food. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and continue picking, but I wanted to give you guys that quick tip on uh, choosing the right tree to pick from. So as you guys can see, we picked a bunch of peaches. I wanna show you guys the hall here. We got uh, like three big flats, or uh, two and a half flats of peaches here between Nate and I. And now we're gonna go to the vegetables, right? When you guys come to you pick farms, I want you guys to like buy a little bit of everything that they have at the farm to support the farm, number one, but also support your microbiome and your diet by eating a greater diversity of foods, right? These are the vegetable fields. And yeah, you could cut your own flower, sunflowers and take them home so they look pretty. But they also have uh, squashes and cucumbers right now. Cucumbers have to be one of my favorite non-sweet fruits in the world because I juice a lot of them. 
uh, to make vegetable juices. You can make, I make straight cucumber juice and I drink that instead of water. I think it's healthier than drinking just water because it's basically water filtered by the cucumber plant with vitamins and minerals and it's structured even, right? Instead of the hard water here in Las Vegas that they add fluoride to, which is nasty stuff. Anyways, we're gonna head down to the uh, cucumber patch and we're gonna hunt for some cucumbers and I love doing this because they're like hiding amongst all the greens. So now we're in the vegetable patch and we're gonna go ahead and pick some cucumbers. And you know, I want you guys to understand like when you come to a youth pick farm, you're not guaranteed to get any food. Like seriously, if you go to the grocery store, they are always stocked with food that you could buy, right? People think that, you know, at the grocery store, it's always full of food unless it was COVID and then the place got ransacked. But you, got, you guys don't understand when you're dealing with nature, the weather happens. You know, we've been having like 100 plus degree days. Today's gonna be 108 actually. So the farm's closing in like five minutes. So we gotta get out of here because they don't open late in the afternoon because people have like heat stroke and stuff. The plants suffer. Some of these plants are not designed to live in like 100 plus degree weather. And sometimes they don't yield well. Sometimes I'll come here and I'll feel all the peaches up. I like coming here to feel the peaches. It's free, no cost. Um, <laughs> but I don't find any peaches to buy and that's all right. Then I'll come to the vegetables and look for the vegetables. And like, this is the only area we were able to find some cucumbers. We walk almost the whole aisle and like a lot of the cucumber plants are jacked up and this is at the very end. So this is the farthest you would have to walk to find cucumbers and guess what? People walk a little bit and they're like, oh, there's no cucumbers, they turn around. We start at the end first. So look at this, we got some nice Armenian cucumbers right here. I love these cucumbers. And uh, let's see if I find another one over here. Oh, and then I love these guys even more. These are the little striped Armenians. So like, if you buy them like this, they're nice and small. These are perfect for snacking on, dipping in a sauce, eating plain, they're so sweet. When they get this big, then I might put them into a salad, or for me, I might actually just juice this into a nice vegetable juice. And I think I saw like one more over here somewhere. Oh, and the other thing, when you when you come to the farm, you gotta like hunt and dig, man. So like, you gotta use your senses. I mean, if you go to the grocery store, they have a whole display of cucumbers you just get to pick through here. I mean, you really gotta like, you gotta like move the plants around and find them like hiding underneath. Cool, what I like most is like coming through and shuffling through here, right? Oh, and look, we found a little small one, but that's like way too small to harvest. So we're gonna tuck that back in there to hide it from people. So it gets to grow bigger. But if I come in here, look at this, look what I found. A nice baby cucumber, man. This one looks so good. I'm probably gonna have to just pluck it off and take a nice bite out of it. Mmm. Nice, crunchy, and sweet. Nice and crisp. I want you guys to hear the snap. Look at that. Oh man, the water's just dripping out of this. So good. Mm. You guys gotta come to your local farm, come to Gilcrease. So here at Gilcrease, besides the you pick area, they'll have an area where they actually have already picked the fruit or vegetables for you guys. Um, they have some red onions left here today. Earlier in the season, they had like garlic and white onions. They also would have like things like watermelon, both red and yellow, and different kinds of like uh, cantaloupes or musk melons. So I wanna encourage you guys, when you guys come out to the farm, don't just do the you pick, but buy the other things that you eat. So like, you know, I will put in like an onion into my soup or my salad or even two, cause actually these are the sweet uh, red onions, which are actually quite rare. Normally you could get like the Mau sweet Maui or Vidalias, but it's very rare to find the sweet red. So you can actually do a lot of red onions to get a little bit of flavor, but without that hot burn in your mouth. So I want to encourage you guys, you know, come to the local farm, you pick, buy fruits and vegetables at the farm first. So like I'm gonna buy all my onions here so that when I go to the grocery store or the health food store next, right? I don't need to buy onions because I've sourced as much of my produce as I can locally and I build my menus around what's growing in my garden fresh and what I purchased or was able to harvest at the local farms that I visit. So this is the haul from the farm day and I want to remind you guys to, you know, visit your local farms and, you know, support local agriculture near you, visit your you picks. If you're not fortunate enough to have a you pick near you, find the closest one and maybe do like a carpool to it with some friends so you guys can go there. And also if you're going for long distances, you know, buy a lot. If you can't come to Gilcrease like every week like I do, maybe like stock up because you can, you know, dehydrate or can or freeze the fruits and vegetables you buy to preserve them for longer to eat them in season. So you could eat local food even, you know, a couple, uh, you know, weeks or months later when the farm closes, because this farm unfortunately closes in the winter time. 
You know, I want you guys to make the majority of your diet fresh fruits and fresh vegetables and with local farms. It'll help you guys to be able to do that. And of course, if you don't have local farms, visit your local farmer's markets and ask the buyer you're buying from at the farmer's markets, did you grow this? When was it harvested? Do you live on the farm? Those are some good questions to ask people at the farmer's market to know if they're like legit or not. When you come to the farm, you know it's grown locally because you're picking it yourself and I love it. So hopefully, I, hopefully I've inspired you guys today to get out to your local farm if you're lucky enough to live in Vegas or the surrounding areas. I encourage you to come out to Gilcrease and if you come on a Tuesday, you might just see me like some other people did today. Um, if you guys enjoy this content, want more videos like this, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and more importantly, share this with other people in the community, in the local Las Vegas community, in the raw foods community, in the plant-based community so that they could learn from some of the knowledge that I've learned over the many years of eating a plant-based diet and trying to you know, do the best I can and share the best knowledge I can so you guys can increase your health and increase the quality of the food you eat because that's what it's about. You know, we're, we're all made up of the fruits and vegetables and other foods we eat. I want you guys to choose health instead of not. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on my new and upcoming episodes. I come in every five to seven days. You don't know where I'll show up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel. Make sure you click the little bell so you get notified as my new videos come out. And finally, be sure to check out my past episodes. My past episodes are wealth and knowledge. Over 600 episodes at this time on this YouTube channel dedicated to sharing with you guys all about the message of eating more fresh fruits and vegetables. And I'll put a couple links down below to when I came to Gilcrease like many years ago so you can see the changes that have occurred. So with that, this is John Cola with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. Until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're always the best.